بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is Mr. Prof. Abbas, the economics teacher. I, from City Wide Model College, how are you at home and your family? I hope you are coping with your studies. Inshallah, today we want to continue from where we have stopped last time. We have started a topic known as limited liability complaint. And we define it last time as a legal entity. That is a business that is separated from the, its owner, which is created by the association of a number of people in a local in a local in accordance with the law for the purpose of pulling their capital together in order to set up a business venture for the purpose of making profits. So that is the definition we gave to it. And we also look at the types of complaints. We have mentioned on limited liabilities complaints and limited liabilities complaints. Under unlimited liability complaints, we said that unlimited liability complaints is a type of complaint in which the ability of members are unlimited. That is, in case when the bank is to be liquidated or is unable to pay its debts, after the asset of the, of the company has been sold, if the asset of the company that has been sold is not enough to settle the debts, the personal belongings of the owner, of the members, are going to be collected, they will sell it and not what settle the debt. That's that's meaning of unlimited liabilities companies. So another one we also discussed is limited liabilities companies. And we said the members of limited liabilities companies, they are limited to the amount of capital they have acquired or the amount of the amount of money they have promised to donate in case when the complaint is a problem. So that's that on limited liabilities complaints. Also, we also said that this limited liabilities complaint is divided into two. We have company limited by guarantee and company limited by shares. Under company limited by guarantees, we discussed that they are formed with the they are, they are not formed with the aim of engaging in trading activities. They are not formed with the aim of engaging in trading activities or to make profits. So they are formed by societies and charitable organizations for members of public to promote and develop certain interests or professions, just to ensure that what they develop certain interests and profession. That is complemented by guarantee. So also we also talk about complemented by shares. We are we said that is a type of company in which members, the labels of the members or shareholders are limited to their value of the shares they have acquired. That is, in case of a business being located or unable to pay its debts, they are only limited to the amount of capital they acquire. They cannot lose more than that. Their personal belongings cannot be taken to settle the debt. We now say that this type of company is divided into two. We have private complaint and public complaint. And we said that private complaint is a type of company that its name is ended with limited or LTD, limited or LTD. Also, the membership is between 2 to 50, minimum of 2 and maximum of 50. Also, they are not allowed to invite members of the public to subscribe for their shares. So they are not allowed. So and any company that is valued as private company cannot invite members of the public to buy their shares. They cannot invite members of the public to buy their shares. So that's that on private company. But on public company, it is a type of company in which its membership is between seven to infinity. That is minimum of seven, but it has no maximum. Under the law, there is no maximum number that is prescribed for public company. But the minimum is seven, but it has no maximum. Also, it is allowed for the public company to invite members of public to buy their shares. That is, whenever they, they want to waste money, they can call the members of public to come and buy, the, to come and take part in their complaint, to come and buy their shares. Also, as far as public company is concerned, their name must end with PLC. Their name must end with PLC. For example, First Bank PLC is an example of public company. So that's that on that. So and all the companies, be it private or public, they must be registered with Corporate Affairs Commission. 
they must be registered with corporate tax sale commission. That's corporate tax sale commission is a government agency that registers complaint. So any company that's going to be formed, they must apply to corporate affairs commission. So that's that on what on the types of company limited by shares. And we also look at the division between the two. So inshallah, we are going to start with the formation of a limited liability company. We have said that concerning private, uh, concerning sole proprietorship and partnership, we said that they don't require any special formation before they can start the business. But this type of company, it requires special type of formation, and that is what we want to look at now: formation of a limited liability company. So the steps involved in the formation of a limited liability company, be it private company or public limited company, are as follows. Step one. The promoters devise a scheme of capitalization, bearing in mind of bearing in mind the cost of formation, asset to be bought, and working capital. What do we mean by promoter? Promoter are promoters are those that conceive the idea of forming a company. They now take every necessary steps in registering in registering such company with the CAC, that is Corporate Affairs Commission. So mean that after there are some people who will conceive the idea, they will now take every step in ensuring that the company is registered. Those people we call them promoters. We call them promoters. So they will now devise a scheme of capitalization bearing in mind. So meaning that the capital that is going to be used by the company, they are going to include it in the paper they are going to prepare to forward to. Corporate Affairs Commission. So the cost of formation has to be bought for the business and the work and the capital, working capital they are going to be using to run the business, they are going to include it in that paper. So and they, they are going to what? They are going to prepare that. That is step one. After they have prepared it, they will now move to step two. Step two, the promoters are required to secure the services of a solicitor to prepare certain documents to be filed. With the register of companies so this is to say that all what we are explaining on that company there are those things that are required by law and if anything is required by law we need a service of what of an expert in that field and that is why a service of solicitor is required so solicitor is going to be engaged so it's going to help the promoters in preparing certain documents. What are those documents? The documents are Memorandum of Association B, Articles of Association C, Statement of Nominal Capital. These are the three documents to be prepared and forward to Corporate Affairs Commission. Corporate Affairs Commission. And we have said that Corporate Affairs Commission is a government agency that looks into registration of all the companies in Nigeria. Then number step three now. Let us now look at the meaning of these. So the document are stamped and lodged with the register of companies. So the document will be stamped and lodged. It will be taken to a register of companies. So let us now look at the meaning of this document in step three. Memorandum of session. This is a document containing the rules and regulations which govern the external relationship of a company with outsiders. So is a memorandum of association is a document that spells out that spells out rules and regulations between the company and the outsiders, between the company and the, and the outsiders. So, as registered, the memorandum, the memorandum becomes a public document. Once it is registered, the memorandum becomes a public document. That is, it will be a document that the company is going to the public will be using that company in knowing the operation of the business of the company so let us now look at the information which are contained in the document which is memorandum of association a number one the name of the company the name of the company which must end with the word limited or plc so the first thing in the document is that the name of the company which must end with the word limited or plc so if you do not forget, we have stated that 
there are two companies, private or public company. So the promoters now must be able to state that if the company is a private company, they must include it by putting the word limited there just to tell that just, just to test the public that what the company is a private company. And if it is public company, the the PSC, abbreviation of BFC, must also what be written there to show that such a company is a public company. So mean that the first information in the memorial registration is the name of the company. Then number two, the registered office of the company. The registered office. Where would the office be registered? It's going to be stated in the memorial registration. Not only that, the three. Number three, the objectives of the company. That is, the business that the company is going to be operating, it has to be stated. The business, the company is going to be operating, it has to be stated. So meaning if the company is going to be carrying out banking operation, it has to be stated. So it has because it will be illegal for a company to register with something and now be operating on that thing. So according to law, the objects or this business which a company is going to be carrying out, it must be stated in the memorandum of association. Then number four, the amount of authorized capital and the various shares into which it is divided. What we say authorized capital? Authorized capital is the type of capital or is the amount of money which a complaint is allowed to raise from the members of the public. Authorized capital is the type of capital or money that the complaint or public complaint, to be specific, is allowed to raise from the members of the public. They cannot raise more than that, but they can issue out below that, below the amount stated. But according to law, public company is not allowed to raise more than what it has been stated in the memorandum of association. So that is authorized capital. So that's the money that the complaint is allowed to raise from the public. So it has to be stated. If it is 10 billion, it has to be stated. If it's 100 billion, it has to be stated in the memorandum of association. Then number five, a declaration that the liabilities of the members are limited. A declaration has to be written there. The members of the, uh, the shareholders now, or the members of the company, would their liability be limited or unlimited? And if you do not forget, we have said that when members are limited, when the liabilities of members are limited, it means that they are only limited to the amount of money they have in the business. They cannot lose more than that. But if it is unlimited, they can lose what they have contributed, and also their personal belongings can be taken to settle the debt. So number six, the names of founders of the company. I say founders, they are the promoters. Those that conceive the idea of forming a company. So, number seven, status of the company. That is, private or public. Status of the company. If it is private, it has to be stated. If it is public, it has to be stated. Now, these are the information to be seen in the memorandum of session. So after we have known, we are going to move to articles of, of our session. Before we move to that, let me make it clear that there is a difference between promoters, those that what that establish the company and the owners of the company. Promoters of the company, they are those that establish. They are the one that conceive the idea of forming a company, and they take every necessary steps in ensuring that what the company is formed. So those are the promoters. But the shareholders, they are the owners of the company. After the company has been formed, has been established by the promoters, the shares will now be sold out. After the shares have been sold out, those that are able to buy the shares of the company, they will now be gathered as shareholders. So the, those people ones now will now be gathered as the owners of the company, meaning that shareholders are the owners of the company. So that is there between promoters and shareholders. So let us now move to articles of association. Articles. This is a document in which the regulations which govern the internal management of the complaints affairs, duties, rights, and powers of the shareholders are stated. So if you don't forget, under the monetization, we have said that 
it is a document that regulates the relationship between the company and the outsiders. Mean that memorandum of association is an external document. So, looking at this as association, is a document in which the regulation which govern the internal management of the company, internal management of the company's affairs, duties and rights and powers of the shareholders are stated. Mean that is a document that has to do with what internal arrangement of the company. So, however, where there is conflict between the two government, the memorandum prevails. So, when there is a conflict, maybe there is something maybe terms which have been written memorandum is is contradicting that of article of session now what is in the article or what is the memorandum of session is going to be preferred over articles of session so let us now look at the information in the article of session one the method of issuing capital the method of issuing capital our capital is going to be issued among the shareholders. It's going to be stated here. The method of holding meetings. The method of holding meetings. So shareholders in the company, they are going to be holding meetings at least one in a year. We usually call it annual general meeting. Annual AGM, annual general meeting. So method of holding such meeting is going to be stated in the article of association. Then number three, the division of powers and duties of directors. The division of powers and duties. Duties and powers of directors, they have to be stated. Duties and powers of directors have to be stated. That is what directors, they are, directors are those that we manage the company, that we direct the company. Then the right of shareholders have to be stated. The rights of shareholders have to be stated there. Then our directors are to be elected. Those that are, that are going to be managing the company, we have said that company is a legal entity. The business is there from the owner. So owners, we appoint some people to be managing the business. So how those directors will be now be elected by the shareholders is going to be stated. Our auditors are to be remunerated. Who are the auditors? Auditors are the independent people that will be looking into statement of account of the company. After the statement of account has been prepared by the accountants in support of the managers of the company. So the auditor will now come from the outside. The trained auditors will come from the outside in order to check whether the financial statement that has been prepared is in line with what we what they are having in the business whether the financial statement that has been prepared shows true and fair view with the what with the companies what with the company's operations so auditors is going to look at so the amount the salary that's going to be the salary that, that, that are going to be what be given to the auditors now must also be stated not only that method of sharing dividends what, what do we mean by dividend? Dividend is the part of profits which are which are given to the shareholders. Dividend it is the part of profits which is given to shareholders as the return on their investment. As a return on their investment. That's not of dividend. So these are the information to be found in the articles of our session. So let us now look at prospectus. Prospectus. What do you mean by prospectus? Before that, under when we are differentiating private and public companies, we have said that public company is only company that is allowed to raise capital from the public. That is to invite members of the public to buy their shares. Private company is not allowed. Private company is not allowed to invite members of the public to buy their shares. So the documents which the public company is going to be used in inviting members of the public to buy their shares is referred to as prospectus. So what do we mean by prospectus? A prospectus is a document issued by the public limited companies only, or issued by the public companies only, inviting the public to subscribe for shares of the company. So it's a document which is going to be used, which is going to be used by the public company 
in inviting members of public to buy their shares and we have said that's what this is only is only public company that can use it private company cannot use it because they are not allowed under the law to invite members of public to buy their shares so step four after going through, through the documents the register of companies they issue a certificate of incorporation to the company this gives the company the power to commence the business so after cac corporate affairs commission has looked into this document all the documents you have just stated now memorandum of session articles of association and statement of nominal capital after they have looked into it so they are now going to give a certificate of incorporation to the company so it's a certificate of incorporation so what do you mean by that it means that what the business can start so the business can start operation. So let us now look at number five before. Number five, step five, step five. A private limited company can commence business after receiving the certificate of incorporation. But a public limited company cannot commence until it receives the certificate of trading. So after the CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission, are satisfied with the documents that has been presented to it by the promoters. So, CSC will now issue a document to the promoters, which is known as Certificate of Incorporation. Certificate of Incorporation. So that Certificate of Incorporation now, after it has been given to company, private company, let's say after it has been given to company, if it is private company, it can start business immediately. But if it is public company, Public company will have to wait until it receives certificate of trading. If it has not received certificate of trading, public company cannot start the business. It's only private company. After it has collected certificate of incorporation, private company can start immediately. So that's that on that. So let us now move to what's meant by certificate of incorporation. Certificate of Impression, which converts legal status on the company to commence business. Legal status. We have said that a company is a legal entity. So this is where their legal entity comes in. So after they have been, the CSA are satisfied with all the three documents we have said earlier, then Certificate of Information will be given to them, will be given to the company. And that the implication of that Certificate being given to the company is that legal status is going to be conferred on the what on the company that's what they are legally in what in existence anything they do now they are they are seen as a legal personality so it's issued by the register of companies the company has put on a veil of incorporation a fit of incorporation what do you mean by fail of incorporation it means that anything that a company does, anything that a company does, the members of the company are not going to be punished for it. So, if a company has done something wrong now, it is the company in its name that's going to be sued. The members of the company, either manager, the manager, the workers of the company, the drivers, and the shareholders, they are not going to be sued. They are going to sue the company in its own name. That's you not know, what bail of incorporation. So we have exceptions to it. That is a situation in which the members of the company are going to be what punished for their offense. That's an exception. But what fail of incorporation means is that when the company does anything, they are covered with that bail. That is, they are not going to be punished. They are not going to be sued. They can only sue the name of the company because of that veil of information they, are, they have so the certificate, the certificate is given out as an evidence that all the requirements of the act in respect of registration have been complied with by the company and is therefore given to start under the act so meaning that these documents we now say the promoters now that have all the documents they have followed all the requirements of the act in respect of registration, uh, in respect of, 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 of registration by the company. So, meaning that what, what do we mean by art? Art 
is the a, a particular law that in the constitution of Nigeria that regulates a certain thing or oh, let's say let's specific complaint that regulates complaint in an in, and that law that regulates complaint we call it karma complaints and allied matters acts that's a special a special section in the constitution that regulates the operation of a complaint so that's that so let us now move to the complaint act what are the effects of a complaint being incorporated what are the effects of a complaint being incorporated now number one right of the complaint to own property which are separated from shareholders right of the complaint to own properties so all the complaints now they have the properties either building land more cars and so on so all the properties now they are owned by the business by, by the company not by the shareholders those shareholders are the owners of the company but all the properties that are owned by the companies are not the owner are not the properties of the shareholders and that's how you say what the owner is different from the what from the business owners are distinct from the business so that's the legal entity so what is owned so after the income sense of information has been given now it is allowed it is allowed by the company to own properties then number two right of perpetual existence right of perpetual existence what do we mean by this it means that complaint can exist for a long period of time complaints by can exist for a long period of time we have so many complaints in nigeria now that they have spent 20 years 30 years 40 years more even more than that in operation because of what that right that they are enjoying because of the incorporation they are being given the right to sue and be sued when we say a complaint is has been given a certificate of incorporation it means that it has a legal entity it's a legal entity business such a business can sue and be sued in its own name mean that once when such a business has done something wrong to another company or to another to any individual such company can be sued and also such company can also sue another individual or another company another business in its own name so that's what that's how we, we what, what is meant by right to sue and be sued for example now first bank can sue another bank or another business in its own name it can sue another individual in its own name so that's how on right to sue and be sued the right to borrow a company has a right to borrow because of that what a uh, certificate of incorporation which has been given and so on so let us now look at certificate of trading this is a document which allows the public limited liability company to commence business activities it's an issue to the public liability company to enable it to commence operation after the company has been given the certificate of incorporation if private company is given certificate of incorporation it can start operation immediately without certificate of trading. So certificate of trading it is a document which has been given to public company to start its, its business. To start its business. So if a private company is given certificate of incorporation, it can start. But public company needs to wait until it receives certificate of trading. If it has not received certificate of, of trading, it cannot start the business. That's what lost it so inshallah this is where we are going to start we are going to stop inshallah so we have been able to look at the steps which are involved in formation of a company we have been able to make us know that a government agency that registers company in nigeria is referred to as cac corporate affairs commission not only that we have been able to say to let us know that there are some people who conceive the idea of forming or establishing a company and they now take every necessary step in ensuring that what the company is registered those people refer to them as promoters mean that there's a difference between those that establish the company and those that are seen as the owners the those that establish the company they are referred to as promoters why the owners are referred to as shareholders it is